In this video, I'm going to be explaining to you how I got this distressed wood grain look using just some paper and some basic distress supplies. The first thing that you need is some craft paper and I use a heavy stock craft paper that I order off Amazon. It's 130 weight and I also use it for a lot of my card bases, but it's perfect for this technique. The next thing that you need is some distress paint in picket fence color and I prefer the dabber top for this technique. You're also going to need some spray stains in hickory smoke, gathered twigs, and pumice stone. You need a distress sprayer with water in it. Also you need the distress archival ink pad with in hickory smoke and you're going to be using that with the 3D lumber texture fade from Tim Holtz and Sizzix. And then we're going to end by using a little bit of Ground Espresso Distress Ink with a blending tool. And all of those put together should give us this wonderful wood grain effect. You can see all the different colors in there. And so I'm really excited to get started explaining to you how we do this. The other thing that you are going to definitely need is a heated tool because we will be drying in between each of the steps. So let's get started. First, I wanted to apologize for any of the glare or the shadows that you might see throughout the recording. I hope they don't detract too much from the technique. But you want to start off by shaking the distressed paint. Make sure it's mixed well. Then when you take the lid off, you are going to go in one direction, kind of already starting to mimic a wood grain. You don't have to be very careful about this. Just you want to get some of that paint all over the surface of the craft stock. And then once you get it covered fairly well, you can see that you want to have a few little bits peeking through that don't have paint on it. You do want to dry it. Once the paint is dry, you need your distress spray stains and you need your distress sprayer with water in it. And we are going to be drying in between, so you are going to need your heat tool ready. And then I just started by adding some color. I sprayed some of the pumice stone on there and I followed that up with a little bit of the hickory smoke and then some of the gathered twigs and I just wanted to remind you that once you do spray your distress spray stains that you do want to wipe off the nozzles before you store them or put them away. Now once I got the spray stain on there I went ahead and I sprayed some water all over it because for this technique I really wanted that stain to saturate that heavy stock. And you can see that I'm trying to make sure that it is running in the direction of the paint which is going to be the direction that the wood grain goes. And then I went ahead and dried in between. All right, once it was dried, I went ahead and you, you can tell I'm not being very careful here, but I'm just using what was left over and was on my craft mat. And I'm picking that up just to add more color. It doesn't have to be pretty or clean. You just want to pick up all that excess ink. Don't let it go to waste and really kind of let it get in there and saturate through that paper. Now you can see that as it's dried, it's got a really nice color to it but I wanted a little more gray. So I went back in and I added some hickory smoke. Sprayed it with some more water. And as I tried to kind of tip it in the direction of the grain, I felt like I wasn't getting enough coverage. And so I just went ahead and used my finger to go ahead and wipe that in the direction of the grain and to kind of get it on there. Then I went ahead and dried it again. All right, so once that's dry, you can see, if you look carefully, that the paint that's on the surface of the craft paper is actually already starting to kind of crackle and weather on its own, which is just a really cool effect that naturally occurs as you're adding all the water and the stains and things like that. But we don't want to stop there. We really want to add a little more interest. The first step to doing that is that you need to take a clean cloth and spritz it with a little bit of water and then just start wiping away. And you can see that the paint that you put on in the very first step is actually a resist to the stain. And you can just wipe that stain right off of the paint and it gives it an even more weathered painted uh, would look to it.
At this point, we're ready to add the 3D embossing. And so I need to cut the paper down to the correct size. So I'm cutting it at four and a quarter. It's already five and a half inches wide. And so that will give me two pieces that will fit perfectly in the 3D lumber texture fade folder. You need to get the folder and at this point this is when we are going to now use the Distress Archival ink in Hickory Smoke. You're going to notice that I'm adding ink to the left side of the texture fade and I'm adding it to all the raised areas and I'm as I'm going through and I'm tapping it onto the raised areas, I also, you can see that I'm kind of taking a little bit of time to try and get some down into some of the areas that would be kind of considered the knots in the wood. And those are kind of depressed in, in the texture fade. So I kind of rub the ink pad into those areas to try and get a little bit of ink in there. And you can see the ink shining on the surface. And so now what I'm going to do is I need to put the paper through it. And so as you know with 3D, what you have to do is you need to spritz it with water and then we're going to put it in the folder. You'll close the folder and then we need to run it through our die cut machine three times. Three for 3D. When you're done with that and you open it up, you can see how that ink has gone down into the little crevices to add that wood grain. You are going to need to dry it, but that has just put it over the top and added that really distressed aged texture to each of the pieces. Now we want to make it into a plank. And so as you can see, if you turn it over on the back, you can see that there are some lines that are there. And so I just used my scissors and I cut, I went ahead and cut right up through each one of those plank lines and you don't even have to worry about you know being careful just go ahead and cut it into three planks right along the lines and then sometimes you actually get a split in the paper which I absolutely love and so if you fold it it breaks apart naturally on its own and it gives it an amazing aged look and I absolutely love that. Then you can get your scissors to cut through any of the parts that don't want to easily tear. You don't want to tear too much. And as you can see, there are several little splits in this which just add amazing wood, you know, old wood grain feel to it. And that side didn't want to split on its own. That's totally fine. You can just cut right up the side there. Now to give it a little bit more texture and a little bit more age, I went ahead and used the, um, I'm not even sure what the name of that tool is, but it's from Tim Holtz Tonic. And uh, it's the one that uh, roughs the edges up. So I'll have to put that uh, in my blog post. Sorry about that. Now I rough up the edges, even the ones that are a little bit rough, I went ahead and used this tool uh, on the sides. And then once you get the sides all roughed up, I used a blending tool and that ground espresso distress ink. And I rubbed as much ink as I could on the sides. I really wanted them dark and the ends. You can also rough up the ends as well. And then once I got it nice and dark so that it just looked like it was really aged on the sides. I also went over some of the areas like the little areas where there were kind of knots in the wood and some little raised areas. I add a little bit of the ink there and then the ones that had the split in them and I ended up actually with quite a few with some splits in them and that's because the craft stock is a lot thicker and so that's why it splits, which I just love for this technique. But I went ahead and I inked the splits. And then what I did was I went ahead and added a little bit of water so that that distress ink, the, the Grand Espresso Distress Ink, would kind of soak into the sides and, again, give it an even more aged and distressed look. And I kind of manhandled them a little bit. I didn't, I wasn't very gentle with them because you do want them to go ahead and kind of have a little bit more texture to them. And so if they get some crinkles and folds and things like that, and it, it really just adds to the look. All right, so as I dried that, you can kind of see that it allows that ink to kind of seep in and under and gives it even more of an aged look. And you definitely want to do that when you add 
the ink to the cracked areas because that really helps it look aged as well. So there you go. As you can see, there are some of the techniques that I use to make some of the aged planks. And this is what I did with them. I put them on one of the uh, vignette trays and just wanted to show you just some of the great texture that you get just by adding that little bit of ground espresso to the, to the edges and to those cracks and how it just really looks like old aged wood.